Welcome to Brikama Community Radio Station. Yeah, these are the uh, two solar panels installed on top at our radio station. Uh, these are the two batteries here. Normally, uh, these uh, batteries normally take us uh, up to eight hours. Yeah, because uh, it is, uh, uh, the battery uh, of good quality, so it really helps us. Uh, they also give us uh, a laptop, a router, and a microphone which really is helping us. Listeners, this is FMB radio station. Uh, we're broadcasting on 98.0. Uh, stay tuned for entertainment. Any of now, we'll bring you announcements. But until then... It's extremely hot in Bikawa here. There is no electricity. But thanks to UNDP, we are now enjoying uh, our solar power. Electricity is now uninterrupted every time the radio is on. Welcome to Kairanyinin Community Radio. Uh, we are very happy to receive uh, this support from UNDP. We are very happy to support the, to receive this support and then it really helps us. Uh, we are benefiting uh, from the, the shola and then the mic also. They give us a, a, a very good mic. Uh, today is the first time I was using the mic, but uh, the mic was very good. And then uh, it is a great support. We can see we are, we are so happy and then grateful for today's support. face massive challenges but thanks to the UN um, uh, UNDP office and of course to its um, UN uh, transitional justice and human rights um, project management we are able to have this special equipment which is the full installation of solar panels across all community radio stations this has been one of the biggest challenges that community radio stations in the country um, have been living for the past decade and it helps greatly in terms of their sustenance uh, both um, um, at uh, their capacity level in terms of financial management and stuff because you look at the level at which community radio stations are able to gain their revenue is very limited and is too low but with partnership uh, from partnership with UNDP community radio stations now are able to at least um, um, retain some funds that they have through the publicities that they do at uh, local community level and retain it for their allowances that they would give to their volunteers that is why most at times community radio stations in fact um, have uh, um, little capacity of um, staff who have been hired mostly it's um, volunteers that have been I mean uh, um, employ employed as volunteers and uh, they're able to stay in these particular radio stations because they are within the community and they understand the um, um, operandi of those community radio stations so we want to sincerely thank the, U the UNDP and of course all partners that are able to uh, participate in the success of this project because it is very timely uh, like I said it has come at a time when community radio stations uh, have faced a series of challenges. We've been partnering with other organizations 
institutions and institutions such as the GPU who have been so much supportive in terms of giving capacities, uh, building capacities of um, resources or personnel from coming into radio stations. And not only that, but also sometimes giving them equipment such as recorders and other stuff. But with this um, a magnificent and uh, huge support from UNDP, uh, we are in fact um, very much um, glad to inform um, everyone that now community radio stations have started operating uh, stretching without um, closing their down transmission because usually the norm was you close have morning transmission and evening transmission that is to say if you open at for example 8 a.m in the morning at 2 p.m you have to shut down the radio and resume at 5 p.m and continue with your evening transmission to 12 midnight but now with the support of solar uh, panel installation community radio stations are able to stretch um, work from 8 a.m to 12 midnight without any closure that is of course thanks to UNDP and we are also optimistic that um, um, what is required of the community radio stations in terms of the project that is um, intensifying the voice of um, victims of human rights violations and sexual and gender-based um, violence will all be, co I mean, be, be fully implemented because uh, it made community radio stations already doing that, um, that sensitization in their respective radios, even though at a limit, limited time because of, like I said, the resources. But now with this project, community radio stations will not have a problem um, ensuring that those programs and those activities are fully, I mean, uh, um, amplified in terms of um, amplifying the voices of victims of human rights violations and sexual and gender-based violence. And also we want to thank the GPU who have been our um, huge partners for always being there for community radio stations. We want to thank UNDP in particular and uh, thank everyone who have been participating uh, for the success of this um, project. Uh, as Secretary General to the network, uh, we have a network that is very organized, that is uh, always ready to coordinate affairs and activities of its I mean, member stations. That is why we were able to have successful I mean, reports as far as our partnerships with other organizations, even at international level. Um, we are able to partner with organizations outside the country and we have good relationship with, uh, with them due to our I mean, energy and due to our commitment towards I mean, part uh, the partnerships that we've had. So I have no doubt in me uh, that uh, through our um, commitment and our dedication um, and with the appreciation of the support that we have, we will be able to achieve another huge milestone during the course of this year of um, the signed MOU between Network of Community Radio Stations and UNDP. I would like to applaud the Network of Community Radios for coming together to ensure that community radios are better supported and can operate effectively. Um, let me not be remiss and extend appreciation to the Irish government who are supporting this project and for its support to enhance the participation of SGBV victims in the transitional justice process and to ensure inclusivity in the process, guaranteeing that the final report provides for list recommendations on effectively addressing sexual and gender-based violence in the country, along with assisting um, sexual and gender-based um, victims to assess vital support services and have access to justice. The government reforms are overall in line with the UN, UN human rights principles and standards, particularly UNDP and OHR, who will continue to support the reform process as they are geared towards providing redress to victims and to help victims and victims' family come to terms with the past, restore rule of law, democratic governance, a culture of respect for human rights, and building a just society underpinned by sustainable development and peace. Since the inception of the transitional justice process, the joint OHCHR and UNDP Transitional Justice and Human Rights Project has tirelessly supported the reform agenda, ensuring the processes are inclusive and that victims of SGBV are adequately reflected in the process. It is important to highlight that SGBV continues to disproportionately affect women and girls and form parts of the violations that are being investigated by the TRC. And in times of emergency, such as the current COVID pandemic, cases of SGBV are on the increase, which 
increases the vulnerability faced by women and girls. I would like to emphasize that community radios occupy a key role in keeping rural communities informed on issues of national interest. And I wish to express our utmost trust and confidence in the ability of the community radios to effectively engage their communities in line with their professional ethics. It is important to underscore the importance of engaging with such a medium to keep rural communities included in the discourse around SGBV. This warranted the need to support community radio stations to ensure that communities throughout the country are engaged on the need to ensure that sexual and gender-based um, victims are better protected and that protectors no longer benefit from the cloak of impunity so long afforded them. Considering challenges posed by frequent electricity shortage through the network, these 10 community radio stations have been provided with 10 solar panels, batteries, microphones, together with laptop and internet connectivity to reduce some of the operational challenges faced. The narrative of the victim blaming goes beyond cases under the narrative of the TRC. And for this reason, it is important that discussions are held with communities to effectively address issues preventing SGBV victims from seeking redress. Therefore, community radios are well positioned to act as drivers of positive change in the Gambian society and well beyond. We want to reiterate our unwavering and continued support of the UN, and in particular, the UNDP and OHCHR through the Transitional Justice Pro uh, Project and indeed our wider governance and human rights program to continue to support the people and the government of Gambia during this um, transition period. I thank you for your attention. As the president of the network of community radio station, I would like to sincerely thank the UNDP for supporting 10 community radio stations across the length and breadth of the country with automatic solar panel systems, microphones, five microphones for five community radio stations, a Wi-Fi router, and of course a laptop. These equipments will go a long way in not only easing the workload on the executive, but also helping community radio station broadcasters across the length and breadth of this country to, to be able to produce their programs without interruption. We know as electricity sometimes is not stable in the country, and community radios have been suffering a lot by paying electricity bill, water bill. But now with the advent of these solar panels is a foregone conclusion and community registration will be able to save a little income that will be used as, as stipends for volunteers and also to buy cash power. Once again, thanks so much, UNDP. Thank you, Yusufa. And I must say that the GPU is very much happy to be associated with the support being given to community radios of the Gambia by the UNDP and the IRS government. Community radio is the third model of radio broadcasting besides commercial and public broadcasting. The GPU has as its priority the need to support the growth and development of community broadcasting in the Gambia. When you look at it, community radio stations are dotted across the country. Almost in every region in the country, there is a community radio. And this is where the people, particularly the poor and the marginalized, get information that they use to make informed decisions, whether it has to do with politics, or it has to do with social life, or merely they want to entertain themselves. But the community radio in the Gambia is faced with challenges, challenges that are very unique and not the same as other media platforms are facing. Because their revenue base is very small, 
governance aspect of it is not so good. And the personnel need some capacity building. And that's where the support comes in. Uh, we strongly believe that it will go a long way in terms of it's strengthening the in institutional capacity of community radio stations so that they will be able to perform their functions effectively and in a way that the public, particularly their audiences, will appreciate. We thank you once again for this support and we hope this will be one of many. We've already seen some of the support that you've given to them in terms of capacity building. We hope this will continue because the need is there. The people need to get the information and the best platform is through community radio stations. Thank you, Seiko. Hello, everyone. My name is Musubaku Tosao, and I am the Deputy Executive Secretary of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission. I just want to take this opportunity to thank UNDP, um, OCHCR, and all of its partners, including the Irish government, for making available this, these funds that were used to buy the solar panels which the media houses would be able to use to address the challenges that they face, in particular those that, um, when it comes to issues of sexual and gender-based violence. We know very well that in the Gambia, issues of sexual and gender-based violence are underreported. And even where they are reported, sometimes the information that is given out um, to the population in relation to um, the, the, the case um, could be traumatizing for the victims and survivors of sexual gender-based violence. As a result, um, a training was conducted for several media houses to train them on how they need to report positively on issues of sexual and gender-based violence. It is important to note that the media serves a very important role in our communities and in our societies as a whole. As a result, SGBV must be looked at very positive lenses. When it comes to, for example, the reporting of such cases, it is important that the media not focus its attention on the survivor, but also to ensure that it doesn't downplay the stories of these victims and survivors. There are a lot of reasonings, including that of the TRRC, why victims are not coming out to speak because of the patriarchal society that we live in, because of the fact that they are mainly discriminated against when they come out with their stories. And as a result of that, um, a lot of victims, in particular women, have not come out to the TRRC to either testify publicly or to testify in camera or even to give their statements because of the fear that they have that once their story goes out, their families would be traumatized their children would be traumatized in particular, and they themselves would be traumatized thinking about all the, 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 the pain, the suffering that they've got, had to go through, especially given the fact that 22 years of dictatorship, a lot of these women, particularly those working in, as civil servants, have had to experience these violations. Consequently, we have seen the, 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 the decrease in the number of statements taken at the TRRC. We have seen the decrease in the number of statements generally given out by, by victims of sexual and gender-based violence because of the fear that the media may report negatively on their issues. We urge the media houses to take these opportunities um, and, and make use of these solar panels to be able to address the challenges that they face, such as failure in power, such as um, issues with internet. We're hoping that moving forward, we would only see positive um, 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 reporting as far as SGBV cases are concerned. And in the event that you think that you need help, there are several organizations, women-led organizations that exist in the Gambia where you could make referrals to to ensure that they help you look at your story to enable you determine whether or not this is something that once reported, it would have a good impact on society, but most importantly, it will not have a negative impact um, on, on, on the victims or survivors in particular. I wish to take this opportunity once again to thank UNDP, 
OHCHR, as well as the Government of Ireland for making this possible. On behalf of the TRRC, thank you.